thank you thank you thank you uh i hope it's recording now yeah it is yeah all right so let me just repeat that so basically a stack is basically uh something that uh, is just a, a pile of things and we can only insert at the top of the stack and we can only take item from the top of the stack right so there is nothing uh, we cannot do anything in between the stack right okay so uh, this uh, the stack concept is clear so let's see how we can do it in our coding or in you know c++ or whatever coding language you're using all right so now the insertion and uh, the deletion function uh, in you know in c++ terminology we call them push and pop respectively so basically insertion we call push and the deletion uh, we call pop is just like you know a, a, a global name that we ha uh, everyone has agreed upon so you know you know uh, there are some functions that are just defined you know use these names you know so is tarah se ye hai ki push and pop right so we have push basically push function will insert at the top of the stack and pop will delete the uh, first most element basically the element that is on the top of the stack and delete it and return it to whatever you know we will see how these functions work and you know how it uh, Uh, they work so again uh, you cannot access data in the middle of the stack neither you can delete neither you can update the data in the uh, bottom or you know in the middle of the stack you can only access the top this is like one restriction of stack right you cannot access anything other than the first element basically the top element okay yeah so uh, let me just see if there is anything what if we use a pointer so uh look uh i know this uh, this is like um, difficult for you guys to understand like you know we will implement stack using you know linked list or array like i know if i have an array like i can just access the middle uh, of the array like with using index right it's not an issue for us but the, but the, but the thing is um like the implementation of stack has to be like that that you can only access the top element you know i know that the values are stored somewhere in the memory right i know that like everyone knows that it's not a secret you know but the thing is you should only allow your end users to uh, to provide only those functions so that they can only access the top value right so uh, the answer to your question is yes you can like you can access like uh, everything is stored in memory the values in the middle are stored in the memory you can access them but you should only provide the functions necessary to only access the top values okay i hope this this is clear to you okay All right so i hope the the stack is uh, uh, the stack is clear okay so let's go ahead um how can you implement a stack okay now let, let's let's think about it for a second like how can you implement a stack right so uh you, you know uh one why is why is uh, what important why is why is what important please sir for us yeah because this is basically what stack is right so <clears throat> when i say i'm creating a data structure that is stack now we know the characteristic of a stack is to only allow the access to the top element right i just told you like you cannot access anything other than the top element in the stack like this is this is a general stack universal definition i would say okay, you know you cannot uh, take anything from between the stack only the top so that's why it is on right so we are trying to implement the stack so we have to follow the guidelines of the of building the stack right so that's why it is very important or it's necessary okay i hope this makes it all right okay so how can you implement okay so how can you implement a stack so now you know like you can just you know keep an array and insert the array right uh, insert at in the array like you have all done that like you know aapka koi bhi element aata you just you know push it into the array and that's it right so is tarah se hum kar sakte hain but but yes and that's how we are basically going to do it but uh, like you know some uh, kuch cheeze hain which will make us you know uh, which will make it easier for us so uh, what are the things so let's see uh 
राइट सो अरेज एंड क्लासेस के थ्रू हम कर सकते हैं The first thing we need to have is let's suppose we have an array of you know like we have defined an array of thousand like this is simple. Now this is the top. Now top is basically just pointing towards where the current stack is. Like at the initial, like you you know the array starts from zero, right? Zero index, one index, and so on, right? So at when our stack is initialized. our top will be minus 1 which is indicating that our stack is empty basically top will be pointing towards the index which has the top element i i think this is this should be relatively clear top is basically pointing towards the index that is the top of the stack why because you know like we are only going to uh, deal with the top so it's it makes sense to you know store that in the top right when we talk about top are we referring okay so we are talking about the top of the stack we are not talking about link list for now like we are just talking about stack this is nothing to do with you know uh, link list we will do stack with link list after the after this and we will see what top is whether head or tail later on okay so right now it's just a stack and there is just a top and there is nothing else okay uh don't think of it in terms of yes this is what uh, he said okay uh so yeah so a top is just you know a pointer that is pointing towards the top of the stack and that's it there is nothing more to it okay so at the start a top will be pointing towards minus 1 which is basically indicating that you know our array is empty you know minus 1 is not an index in array so it means that our, our array is empty right so let's see now push function okay so push function what what is our push function supposed to do we just discussed that it is going to insert at an element on the top of the stack right so it it's fairly simple like first of all we will see that whether our stack is full so our first condition uh, if you see here like i think there are some things like this right yeah okay so if you see over here uh, you can first of all our condition is uh, our when our stack is full if our stack is full obviously we cannot you know insert in it now how do you check if our stack is full you know simple uh, we have an array of size 1000 if it's uh, greater than equals to 999 obviously it's going to be full right so it, this is pretty clear now if the stack is not clear what will we do we will simply just insert the element on the plus plus top so i hope you guys know the difference between plus plus top and top plus plus right uh, i think you guys must have covered it like it's a very basic concept so plus plus top is basically you know just saying that uh, before executing this line of code add one to the top and then execute this line of code so at the at before this line top is going to be minus 1 it will become 0 and it will say array sub 0 equals to x so it will insert at zero index whatever the value we are going to be pushing right and similarly uh, then we will it will be pushed okay simple yeah yeah like don't, don't like uh, uh you know don't you don't have to answer it's fine it's fine guys don't worry okay okay so and then display like okay like i think you all can see out an array uh, at this point if you guys can't like it's uh, it's very hard for you guys to you know uh, cover this course if you can't but i hope you can all right move up please i want to show you the when all right pop uh, so what pop function is supposed to do it's supposed to you know uh take out the last element or basically the top element uh on the stack basically the last element that we have inserted in the stack all right okay i will answer all of these uh okay let's just see all right why is in the condition top is well like i by this point you should have this knowledge like you think about it if it's if it's top greater than equal to max it's saying 
like you are allowing 1000 index if a ray is 1000 there is no 1000 index in the ray the indexing ends at 999 because it starts with zero come on like uh, this should be clear guys this is not yeah. all right um all right pop so uh, again a pop is basically just you know uh, something that is basically deleting the top element okay so simil similarly we will check if our stack is empty if it is empty you know <laughs> we can do anything uh, and if it is not empty what we will do is integer so basically it's just going to you know decrease the top uh, of the array right so if top is two it will create one and whatever is written in the two second index it will save it in x and then we will just return that x uh, i have this uh, this is clear i just want to again point this out so here i'm talking about here so what this line of code is going to do so let's suppose our top is at two right now what it will do is it will see it will take array Two, basically whatever is at index two store it in x and it will decrease top by one after executing this line of code because it's minus minus again it's you know uh, and then it will just return x right so whatever is at the top it will just decrease uh, top now remember you are all thinking like the element that was at second index is still there <clears throat> right and it yes and it really is still there like the element is not being deleted that was at index two. We are just decreasing the top and in, right? We have not deleted the element. And you will be surprised to know that even in OS stacks, like, you know, the OS operating system stacks, this is actually how it's done. Like they don't delete the addresses in the computer stacks as well. They just move the pointers here and there and then overwrite when it needed. They don't really delete anything from the computer stacks as well. So you don't really need to delete the values. If you want to, you want to be really efficient. Yes, you can like, uh, but uh, in general stacks really don't need to delete it. Okay. So this, this should be clear. Uh, if uh, I think this is clear, let's just see if there are any questions related to this. Shouldn't we do? Yeah, this. Then what is the junk value we see? Sir, when we pop, we don't need to delete it. Sorry, what? Sir, when we pop, sir, if we have done this, have done this, or 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 this, or have done this, or have done this, or have done this, or have done this, or उसको इंडेक्स को नीचे कर देते हैं या फिर आप सिर्फ उसके जो वहां पर वैल्यू होती है उसको भी चेंज करते हैं नहीं कर रहा ना मैं आपको ये तो बता रहा हूं उस कि हमने उसको नहीं करना एंड दिस इज हाउ इट्स यूजुअली डन सो यू डोंट रियली नीड टू बट इफ यू वांट टू यू कैन लाइक यू कैन बिफोर दिस लाइन ऑफ कोड यू कैन से एआरआर टॉप इक्वल्स टू यू नो जीरो और डिलीट एआरआर टॉप एंड देन बिफोर सेविंग दिस आफ्टर सेविंग दिस वैल्यू सॉरी राइट यू कैन डू दैट बट अगेन you you really don't need to because that's how generally stacks are implemented you know what you're talking about it's basically a security measure that is implemented later on the stacks in os but that's an advanced thing you don't really need to know about that but yes i hope this clears out everything okay so this is just a main program you know let's let's we i have this whole code over here so let's just run it quickly because this is just so basic so i don't want to spend much time on this right so um Right, so uh, this is our code, you know, it's basically just a copy paste. I just copied from sublime to slides. So this is the code, right? And what we are going to do is uh, we are going to push 10 and then push 20 and then push 30, right? So now our stack should be uh, 10, then above 10, 20, then above then 30, right? So I, I hope this is clear. And then you just, when you pop, you will get the 30, right? So 30 popped from the original stack. And then when we display the stack, it's just saying 10 and 20, right? So um, yeah, I know uh, this is printing, I guess, uh, uh, from uh, top to bottom. So don't don't like uh, think about like this, okay, stack is out there. So it's uh, basically 10 below and 20 above. I hope this is clear, right? We are just um, printing it out like this. Uh, it doesn't really matter, okay? Uh, I hope this is clear. So if uh, I hope this is clear and we will just move on, right? Because we have, 
other things to cover. Yeah, so <clears throat> we are going to now create a class of stack. Now, creating a class of stack is like relatively uh, simpler than using a linked list uh, stack, but uh, let's see what we are, ne we are needed. So what we need, an array, and then a pointer that is basically top. And that's all we need to define the stack, right? And maybe the size of the stack, right? Other than that, uh, you can uh, print it like this. It uh, It's no issue because uh, it's just, you know, for your display. Uh, but the implementation should uh, is the correct way, right? Uh, you can use this, it's fine, okay? No problem. But if you want to, you know, be extra efficient, you can do the other way as well. You know, you can, it's, it, that's not hard as well. You are just going to start from the loop from the end of the array to the zero, right? I think, you know, right, it's not issue. Okay, uh, so let's move ahead and we see, uh, okay, so I was discussing to create a stack, we need only one array, the top pointer and the size of the array or the stack. Uh, that's it, that's all we need, right? So that's what we are going to store in our class stack. We have defined the max to be thousand, the same thing. And then we are just going to, you know, have a top and then an array of a, and that's it uh, in our stack class. And that's it. And then we will have a constructor that will define top to be minus one. We discussed why this is minus one, right? Uh, and then we have these functions, push, pop, display, and is empty. We have discussed the push function. We have discussed the pop function. We have discussed the display function. We haven't discussed the empty function. So an is empty function is basically just a Boolean return type function, which is going to return true when the stack is empty. And we know when the stack is empty. When stack is empty, when top equal equals two, minus one, other than that, the top will be somewhere other than minus one, right? It will be zero, one or whatever, you know? So that's how you are going to create a stack class. Uh, let's take the questions if there are any good. Okay. Uh, Aisha, you can do it again. Um, I have told you, like there are multiple implementation ways. Like I can implement stack using 10 different ways, okay? You can use dynamic memory, you can use simple array, we will do linked list right now. Like you can do it, but it's, it's just, you know, uh, for introduction, so I, I, we thought, you know, start from, you know, basics and then you can obviously implement it using dynamic memory. There's no issue in that, okay? No, no problem. All right, so smart, uh, sorry, is the best to you? Yes, again, I, that's that's the same question. Uh, no, 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 no. It's just like an example. There is no max size of stack. Like it's totally dependent on your situation, what you are coding. If you're, if you need a better, uh, other stack size than thousand, you can create it. Uh, it's not a hard and fast rule. Okay, don't worry about that, all right? So yes, again, let me just repeat. You can use other data structures to implement stack. There is no issue. The size can be different. There is no issue in that, okay? What does it say? It, what does it say? Why, okay, why does it say stack before? Well, it's, it's the comment of the last, you know, like I copied the code, right? So to display the whole stack, this is, this stack is basically the commented of the last line. So yeah, I know it's kind of confusing, but yeah, it's that. All right, I hope this is clear. Um, all right, so a push function is going to be, uh, the same, like we are not going to go over it again because we have already done that. It's just, you know, the we have just inserted everything into a class and that's it. Now in our main, what, we've, what will be the difference? We will create a stack object and, you know, we can just, you know, check if it's empty or not and then push and pop the same thing. We are just going to do it with a stack object because now we have created a class before we had no class, right? Uh, there is nothing uh, new, there's nothing uh, new concept wise. It's just that we have just 
put everything inside the class. All right. So let's close this. Now I have the whole code over here as well. Um, it's the same thing that I have copied in the slides. So uh, this is basically the main. Uh, let's just go over the main just so you know, uh, you guys are completely sure. Uh, we are created a stack object S and then we have this is basically checking if stack is empty or not and you know at the start the stack is supposed to be empty right and then we have pushed three elements 10 20 30 then we pop and the pop will be 30 you know and let's just run it and we can see the output right so at the start stack is empty then 10 pushed then 20 pushed then 30 pushed then 30 popped because of this line then we check uh, if stack is empty or not, then it says stack is not empty. And then we have just displayed and, you know, this thing. All right. Wait, let me see questions. There is one function that I ha we haven't discussed. So we will discuss it before uh, moving on this reversing. Okay. So don't go into that. Why does it say, okay. Uh, continue. All right. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, so reversing the stack, we will discuss now. Okay. So before that, it should be clear. Okay. Uh, reversing a stack, right? So what we want to do is basically reverse a stack. Now, you know, if you have an array, how do you reverse it? You know, uh, a simple logic is basically start from the end of that array and take every element and insert it into a new array, right? That is how you do it. And that is how we are going to do it in stack as well. Basically, what we are going to do is take the top element, insert it in a new stack. Take the sec other uh, pop another element, insert it into the new stack. Pop another element, insert it into a new stack. Now, if you think Excuse about me, it, yes. So, we don't make new stack. We just store it temporarily variable and store it and replace it. Then it's a problem. Uh, what do you mean by temporary variable and store? Sir, so, the top element is temporary variable and store. The bottom one is the upper one. And the temporary variable and store is the upper one. Now, how will you do it without popping out all the elements? Sir, so, array, right, sir. Indexing yeah, exactly. But remember, our stack ka objective. Stack is stack. We can only access the top element. I know, I know it's confusing that there is an array. We can just, you know, access the last elements. Like you have done this thing like thousand times. But now try to think in the perspective of a data structure, you know, like we are creating a data structure that will only allow access of the top elements. You cannot access the bottom elements. Okay. So now you have to access the top elements only. So you will have to pop all the elements one by one to access that last element right so this this is the stack this this is what the stack data structure is supposed to be right so you have to keep that in mind you cannot just access the bottom element i uh, i i'm i have repeated this thing like uh, i think 10 times i think i hope this is clear to everyone you cannot cannot access the bottom elements only and only the top element of a stack this is just how stacks are supposed to be and uh, uh, it's, it's not my rule guys don't don't worry man it's not like i'm a dictator and i'm defining these rules it's just you know what a stack is supposed to be, all right? So, I, so now if you think about it, then you, uh, then your, uh, you know, uh, what you just said doesn't. Um, yeah, uh, Ali, I think you should ask the guy who invented the stacks, right? Right. So, yeah, I think I think that's his issue, not mine, right? So let's okay. So let's move ahead and we see reversing a stack. Okay, so uh, we uh, you guys have done operator overloading, right? In classes, right? So what we are going to do is overload plus plus operator for the stack class, right? We have implemented the stack class. Now what we want is when we say plus plus s, it should return us the reverse stack. And how will we do it? I have just told you. Like we will just pop element one by one and insert it into a new stack and then at the end we will just return the stack right and um, this should be fairly simple like we have done all of this right um, so we have this and now we have this function called stack operator plus plus this is basically operator overloading you guys have done this right uh, this should not be an issue so we have creating a temporary stack called temp stack in item 
while no is empty so basically is empty equal equals to false is saying while our stack is not empty like the current stack so basically until our stack has any element keep what we want to do is keep uh take the element at the top and then pop all right so uh, whatever the item is at the top take it and then pop what it will do is uh, reduce top by one right <clears throat> the pop function and then we will uh, push that item into the new stack and then you know and we will keep doing this doing this until our stack is empty right hope oh, this is clear this is fairly simple this is not an issue will a will while top is greater yes it will have the same effect it will run until our top is greater than or equals to 0 when it becomes minus 1 it will break so yes uh, like you can use this logic as well this will have the same one yes no issue right so it's just about how you think okay it's not an issue and then uh, return temp stack right uh, but, uh, we have created a stack we have inserted all the elements of the stack and this just then just we return the stack right the new stack and this is simple uh, is uh, this uh, um right so so yeah so this is our function simple function there is nothing um too hard about this i hope so this is a function and let's just uh see how let's just run it and you know you can see like the what is going on okay so we were here here is the remaining stack so after this what we have done is reversing the remaining stack now i have already uh, copied the function over here you can see the function the same in the slides don't worry about that uh we will do uh what we will do is um uh, call that function using like this right so stack reverse stack equals to plus plus s i hope this notation thingy is clear to you because we have overloaded the operator plus plus you guys have you must you guys must have done this right um this is in stacks and then when we say reverse stack dot display it prints 2010 instead of 1020 like our original stack was 1020 and the you know the reverse stack is supposed to be 10 uh, right so yeah it makes sense and then if you pop from the new stack it will return you 10 because the top of the new stack is 10 right so uh, this is fairly simple nothing too hard to understand here so let's just move on yeah this is just the driver function you know that we have just discussed okay <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Guys give me one minute. all right um sorry uh, okay so stacks and linked list so we discussed that we are going to implement uh, our stack with linked list okay so we have discussed linked list um, you know uh, it's fairly simple um, i hope by now you guys should have a lot of practice because it has been two weeks now so what is in a linked list a linked list uh, is just basically a um a linked list is just basically an array i told you guys right so it's 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 just a fancier way of saying that this is an array what we do is uh, we create nodes and in each node we have basically a data and a next pointer right and how and we we say in the next pointer where our next node is going to be basically we store the address of the next node in our next pointer of our node right and that's how we chain together nodes to create a complete linked list right so that's how we do it now we also discussed a lot of functions uh, in the lecture if i remember correctly i don't i think we discussed insertion at head insertion at end i think 
deletions etc so it's a deletion at head i think we discussed i don't remember exactly but uh, you guys should know uh, all of those functions by now because um, you know yeah so yeah so that's an array a quick recap of uh, linked list sorry and now we are going to see how we can implement stacks using linked list now we just discussed stacks using array now what is like like think about it for a second there is nothing really difficult about stacks is just you know we are just inserting and deleting at one end instead of anywhere like is basically easier than implementing an array you know in array you have to cater insertion at everywhere in in stack you just have to insert and delete at only one end right and that's all you have to do right stack are relatively easier than array and that's actually true you know uh, so a linked list let's suppose we are going to implement the stack using linked list now think about it for a second if we say that our head pointer you know the head pointer that we were discussing in linked list what is that that is basically describing where the first element of our linked list is if you guys remember now if that if if we say that that head is our top let's let's like i said okay that is my top what will happen then what we will have to do is always insert at head remember what happens when a linked list is generated uh, it's creating connections now if we insert an element at head what happens is it the head becomes the new element so this remember in stacks we also had the same thing whenever we inserted a new element in an array the top became that new thing remember like if we inserted at 0 the top became 0 if we inserted at index 2 the top became 2 right so it's just like linked list we are going to insert at head that that makes sense to me at least so yeah so right so this this is pretty clear if you just think about in that perspective that our top is going to be just head in a linked list and then if our push function is going to be exactly same as insert at head function that we discussed in linked list function right so okay so i hope the top why top is head why top is head thing is clear to you guys and we will discuss other functions later on okay no question so most probably it is okay so think about like this our top is 99 right and then this is our linked list right now right so our top will be pointing towards the head basically the top is always pointing towards the last element that was inserted or the most recent element inserted i will change my uh, way of speaking uh, the most recent element that was inserted was 99 because it is at head so the top is going to be 99 uh, this this is also another example explaining that stack pointer basically the top uh, that we are calling top is going to be the element the first element in the linked list basically if the 4 6 7 2 then uh, uh 4 is going to be the top 6 is going to be uh, below below 4 in our stack then 7 2 right so 4 6 7 2 7, right so this this should be pretty clear all right let's move on uh let's just uh quickly go into the c and go the code or the code and we will see a visualization after this okay there is a cool website i want to share with you guys okay so uh this is just basically the same node right the same node class that we discussed the node has data next and then declares stack class now in our stack we only need top now now remember before we said class linked list and there was a top pointer head now we are just we are just going to you know class stack and node pointer temp top equals to now this is basically just that right so this is this is pretty clear to you guys and then push what is going to be the push function push should be equivalent to insert at head in our linked list class the insert at head function is going to be the push function we will pass the data to this push function it will create a new temp node uh, you guys have done this uh, so this is basically a 
check if our temp pointer could not be created. This is basically saying that if our memory has been exhausted, like we cannot create even a single new pointer, then it will return. This is basically just a check, you know. And then if uh, we have successfully created our, uh, you know, uh, temp pointer, just assign the data, whatever it is, into here, then pu uh, put, and then temp next equals to top, and then top equals to temp. In the, in the linked list version, what we did was, temp next equals to head and head equals to temp. You guys can go and check uh, there like we did this. It's just that we have just renamed head to top because now we are saying that top is our head, right? This this is pretty simple. should be pretty clear to you guys, okay? Uh, exit one is basically, Salman, uh, it's just an error code. Uh, so you know that you write return zero in main function, right? Why do you do that? Return zero means uh, you are exiting your function, uh, your code with error code zero, basically saying no error. Exit one means you are exiting your code with a, an error code of one. There are multiple error codes. You can look it up at Google, right? So you can search on it, but you know, exit one means uh, you your program encountered an error somewhere and it will display on your console go go na um, it's a very good fun exercise aap ja ke na ye kar sakte ho try it out in int main int main mein jao and say exit one and see what is printed on console then then say return zero and then see what is printed on console it will be clear to you guys uh, clear to you what happens okay all right so uh, then a similar function is empty okay so is empty when our top equal equals to null it's going to be empty right so we just said return top equal equals to null right simple fairly simple this is this is just too simple to even explain okay okay so peak function now peak function we haven't really discussed so a peak function is basically just saying whatever is at the top of the stack is just going to return us the value so basically peak function is just you know peaking on the top of the stack, okay? What is at the top of the stack, if I ask you? So basically you will call a peak function, okay? Simple, fairly simple, nothing uh, to, uh, you know, be confused about it over here. Uh, if uh, the stack is not empty, we will just say return top data, because why? Because we know that top is pointing towards the top of the stack and the top data is going to be whatever is in the top of the stack, right? Uh, fairly simple. Then we move towards pop. Okay, now we discuss push function. Push function is equivalent to insert at head. What should be the pop function be? I think this should be pretty clear to you guys. Uh, deletion at head, right? It is simply deleting the head element, right? Okay, and uh, also uh, there is one difference. We, uh, well, not a difference, but you know, a small tiny tweak. Uh, we have defined the return type to be integer instead of void for pop. Why? Because uh, what we want is to return the value as well. So before, de before you know, deleting that uh, uh, node, we have just saved the value of the previous head and at the end, we will return this value. You can see over here, return, return, return. Guys, if you want to, if you want me to go over this function again, tell me, otherwise I'm not gonna spend my time because we have spent so much time on insertion and deletion in the link list section, right? So I don't want to spend time on this. Yes, 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 exactly, exactly. But, but okay, Hassan, remember, yes, everything is same, but, uh, Thing, uh, don't put all the function of linked list in stack. Only put the functions that are going to be necessary for us, you know? Like we also discussed function there, insert at the tail and delete at the tail, insert in the middle, delete at the middle. We cannot do that in stacks, okay? Yeah, yeah all right. Uh, yeah, I just want you to clear your, yeah, okay. So again, we, I have that code over here, done, right, written. Right, it's the same code. We'll just run it and see if it works. I've already run it. I know it works. That's why I'm saying, let's see if it works or not. Okay. So I, I already know. Uh, so we have, uh, again, uh, we have this stack class and all the functions of that in 
are in this, you know, in that class. Now we will create an object named S. We will do the same thing as dot post eleven twenty two thirty three forty four, and then we just then we display. It says forty four thirty three twenty two eleven. Like uh, I don't know why. Like I changed the display over here. I don't know why actually. I should have done the same thing, like top to bottom, but whatever. So print top element of the stack. This is basically the peak function. You know, like uh, we discussed, the peak function is going to the return the, the the first element or the top element. Delete top elements of stack, right? And this is basically that. All right, right. So uh, if there is any question in the whole stack concept or you know the whole. uh link list stack implementation or anything regarding stacks please do ask right so uh if there isn't then we can move on yes it is impossible it is it is impossible yes think about it like that and now you're going to ask me no it is possible as you're going to say no it is possible we can access the middle element just like we did i said no we can't i'll fight you on that okay why are stacks useful hmm that's a good question you know um so i will give you an example of uh, our operating system so when you have multiple instructions that need to be ran uh, in an order so let's suppose i have i want to uh, you know go and do something salman don't do that uh when we do that this creates issues so please refrain from doing these things guys please okay uh okay so why are stacks useful so i was hello someone all right uh so guy uh why is stack useful so i was giving you an example that uh, let's suppose we need to run multiple instruction in a specific order right so to do that we need to store them in a stack like i know you can store that in 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 an array as well and then just loop over that array as well but but you know uh the proper implementation of that should be stacks because stacks are this is basically the um uh, reason why stacks are used in our, in our operating system as well on there is a stack in our operating system that stores the instructions that needs to be uh, run uh, in an order and that's a very big use of stacks and uh, in our operating system you can think of other examples as well now think about it like uh, you know uh, a lottery you know uh, in a lottery you have multiple yeah yeah th this this is also a good example yes right so you can think about other examples as well i was talking about lottery like in lottery you take out the balls i don't know if you guys know the big uh, you know i don't even uh, the big ball lottery where they take out the balls whichever is on the top and you are assigned that number and according to that number you get the uh, money prize or something right so uh, that's also a stack like you can think about other examples as well right so uh, i hope this is clear i know this seems like a very useless data structure you know stacks like we can just achieve this using array as well right uh, and yeah well i cannot really argue with you that on that end but the the well there is one thing that stacks do provide they provide um data privacy or data protection sorry so think about it like this now let's suppose we have a shared stack uh, which is shared between Uh, operating system and user now what we want to do is do not give access to the to the computer's instructions to the user user can only access their own data so what we can do is you know push all the instructions of cpu below the stack and then only give access to the top of the stack uh, to the user 
that way we can ensure our data protection that is on the deeper level of the stack sorry guys i only have examples regarding computer science i cannot think about a real world example on stacks per se so but yeah this example is also good you can also think about other examples as well but i hope the concept is clear to you guys right okay uh, is there any other question um, if there isn't then we will just move on okay and yeah all right i th i think i think i hope this is clear this is fairly simple stack and let's move on to q now you know um, at the start of the lecture i was discussing like uh, we dis uh, in our lecture two weeks ago we discussed that there were two types of implementing yes someone was all right so uh, we were discussing in uh, that we had two implementations of linked list one was head only and then there was also one implementation that i explained to you guys which had head and tail both right so now we saw that we can uh, implement stack using head only implementation right we just defined head to be the top and now let's see what we can do with the other implementation that was heads and tails uh, combined right so a queue what is a queue um, what is a queue in real life like let's suppose you are at a you know uh, checkout counter in a mall or something or i don't know shopping center or something all right so there is a queue now what happens in a queue the person that is at the front gets treated the first right so the person at the front of the row or the queue is the person who will be treated the first and then if a person needs to enter the queue so basically let's suppose you are you have done with your shopping and you are coming to the checkout counter and there is a queue you will insert at the last end right does it make sense unless you know you are not a good person and you cut the line you know pakistanis do that a lot but uh, other than that uh, you know you usually insert at the end right uh, and you should be guys uh, please all right so this is a queue right so the person at the front gets treated the first and then the uh, then the next and the next and the next and this is basically the queue in uh, the in our c++ as well right so just think about it like this like now what we want to do is when we have an item coming in we will insert it at the end and when we are going to remove an element we will remove it from the front right uh, and it's, it's it's that simple there's nothing like mumbo jumbo about that right uh, it's basically just translating the real world knowledge to our uh, to our coding programming right c++ okay uh, yeah so let's see how how it is done numerically or you know let's see an example of this queue so let's see this is our example so at the start we have this array uh, at our zero index it has 10 then 15 5 20 19 50 this is going to be our front basically you know the start of the queue or front of the queue whatever you guys want to call it like usually it's called front and rear but uh, it's just you know terminology whatever suits you guys uh, and then there is going to be a rear which is basically defining where is the where it's going to insert a new element or where the most recent element was inserted right so here is defining where the most recent element was inserted and front is defining where the least recent element uh, was inserted right or the first element that was inserted right all right guys please uh, those uh, mic mute okay all right so uh, then uh, let's suppose we are going to insert at an element uh, when we insert an element it inserts after 50 you can see why because uh, we just discussed you know like if you're coming uh, at the checkout counter after shopping you su are supposed to insert at the end of the queue right now if we are going to delete from the queue then what should be done 
it should delete the 10 because 10 was the first person that came to the queue so it should he should or he she he or she should be treated the first right so we will delete 10 and then you know uh, if this is an array we will move uh, move uh, all elements you know one 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 back to so now 15 is the first element you know you can just see that we have just shifted whole this array back one point right so uh, if this is clear must be there is a quiz uh guys give me one minute Uh, guys, I just ask a TA. Uh, there is no quiz according to her, but let's let's just verify in one minute, okay? Let's just verify in one minute because I wasn't told there was any quiz, okay? The three thirty pair. Are you quiz. sure? Where? Yes, even in the morning. Because I have um, no news about that. No. no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I should know, or at least the TA should know. You know, I just asked you head TA. TA. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, let me just confirm one more time. All right, guys, quiz apparently I wasn't told, so we are not going to finish this thing. I wasn't told that, but all right, let's you guys can go uh, and do your quiz, I guess. So we'll stop here and I guess the uh, server will continue uh, later on, okay? All right, okay, guys, uh, take care. Allah, office. Tata, sir.